I also acknowledge the elders past and present of the First Nation on whose land we now stand and also bring you greetings from another volunteer committee, uh, the committee of the East Gippsland Rail Trail, which is a 97 kilometre long linear trail between Bairnsdale and Orbost in uh, way out in East Gippsland. When I walked in the door, uh, I was a bit sort of taken aback because some of the th photos that are going to be projected here, you can actually see they're, <laughs> they're up on the, the, the prints around the, around the room. But uh, I guess adding a few other comments to most of them might be a little interesting. The, uh, this parkland has a, a complex history. It has a complex past. Uh, quite a varied past between uh, being a piece of land which provided habitat and a life place for the original Aboriginal people who lived in this area. It became farmland, it became a quarry, um, it became a rubbish dump. It's, uh, it's been through quite an evolutionary process. I guess it was probably the threat of a freeway that triggered um, the major explosion of community activity and interest in this piece of real estate, this amazing photo here. I, I'll mention the word fences because I'll come back to fences right at the very end of my few comments. What fences do, what fences are, why do we have fences? But I want to talk about this or think about this as the common. Are you familiar with where the concept of the common comes from? <laughs> You've done a bit of English history, British history, I guess. It's a, a common place where you could graze, you could go and cut grass and stuff like that. But it was a, a piece of real estate that didn't have a fence about it, didn't have a fence across it. It was a place where people could come and go. Peter, can I get you to, we'll roll through these, uh, these oh, photos. Turn the light off there. Is that better than the sound of Also comment that, um, um, there's another person in the audience tonight, my son Jonathan, who uh, used to lark around in this park <laughs> a long, long time ago. Okay. So the early days, it was uh, pretty stripped out as a lot of Victorian uh, uh, waterways had been. Uh, and all you saw in the early days was sort of desolation. Yep. Where, where's that one from? This is, uh, well, you can see here the waterway, which is the, the, the down <laughs> at the back. Uh, the big building in the background is, was a council building, I think, and this is all fill that came from the Botanic Gardens. It's actually over the old tip site. Yep. Oh, just another, another photo of it, but it, back in those days, you'd think, what the heck can we do with this? You know, this <laughs> very challenging. Michael, what year, approximately what years are these photos taken? Sorry? What year? What year? Oh, uh, these would be um, late 70s and 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, okay. around that time. Yeah. Pretty much uh, a piece of water you wouldn't want to go and jump into. Mm. Bit of machine work developing. Okay. Yep, just more of what looked like a desolate place. This is down below the escarpment, below, um, well, Wednesday Crescent's up on the left. Um, bit of a mixture of all sorts of things that had grown over the years. Yep. Um, 
people would drop matches, you'd have fires. This was the local fire brigade turning out one day. Oh, that fire engine, that's beautiful. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a member of the CFA and <laughs> I wouldn't, wouldn't like to have to uh, work with one of those machines. But anyway, that's what the, the fire brigade had at the time. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, you'd, you'd wake up one day and find that the place was on fire or something like that. Okay. That's, yep. that's snake grass, if you're wondering where, where we're looking now. Oh. That's, that's the corner of Smith Street. That's the corner of Smith Street where the shared trail comes out. Oh, amazing. Yep, um, people would like to go and back up their trailer and sort of sweep whatever they had on board over the side, so it was fairly common. Now, th this of course um, fairly quickly became a great place for kids and all the kids around the neighbourhood would make great use of it. Uh, two of my children, uh, Jonathan's one of them, uh, some of them were game enough to go and swim in the, uh, in the, in the pond there, <laughs> it didn't look very inviting. Crossing the creek down, um, we actually lived in, what was this house, right up here on the very top, um, number seven, Wednesday Crescent. So we. It was a, an easy, easy run down the backyard and hop across the, the creek there. That's where, so, the, uh, that's where the planting day was on Sunday. Young Jonathan on his bike there. Yeah, it all looks a bit bare, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's just gradually evolving. A place for people, yep. People coming down, picking um, herbs and other things. This is um, just, that was just upstream uh, from the bridge. And it was not long after that that um, quite a major planting developed, as you'll see in the next slide. Um, this is taken from up on Wednesday Crescent, the telephoto shop. Um, and that the very early planting is just appearing there and the Sydney Clifton zigzag uh, that comes down on that. It's a slope of fill which is, was always moving and putting the zigzag in was an attempt to try to stabilise it so that because people were just skating straight down it and mulberry spur of course. Early work on uh, getting the pond in down to the south of the park. You recognise that. <laughs> and the city skyline. <coughs> so planting was um, certainly the, the major activity for the for the DPO once it got going and um, a really very challenging but it didn't take too long for things to grow. Great, um, great place for for plants. Um, staked out all that big plantation of towering gum trees down there now below Pine Ridge. And there, they're, they're getting up, and there you can walk through there. And mm -hmm. uh, how high are they? Uh, Twenty meters, thirty yeah. meters. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> So it didn't take long for people to realise that once it became a little more civilised that um, you could do all sorts of things, lots of activities as an Aboriginal presentation. And so we're getting to a point where the bridge is now sitting in place and the plantation going around below Mulberry Spur is beginning to emerge. <laughs> the little bridge, which was an interesting undertaking. All this timber work was assembled in Sydney Clifton's sitting room, and we um, dry assembled it in the sitting room and then brought all the bits down. And over several days, or well, a couple of days, it was probably a weekend, uh, constructed it. <laughs> and as Melbourne weather will have it, <laughs> on the great opening day, it rained. <laughs> so we're 
getting towards the end of this, this, this short collection, um, Pine Ridge, and here, just behind the tree, is the Ranger's Hut, which was a community construction undertaking. And Peter, we can just go back a moment. The, uh, the next few slides will actually um, be around this little spot here because it was the occasion of the opening of the Rangers Hut by Dick Hamer, who you can imagine today getting a Premier to come down and open a concrete, <laughs> <laughs> concrete decked hut that had been built by volunteers. I think that would be quite amazing. Our city, and I suppose if you were to go up to Winstow Crescent now and look back at the city skyline, it's a bit of a sharp reminder of what is happening in terms of population. We're living here in a, a, a place of rapidly growing population and it's the demands on uh, this piece of uh, public land, uh, the commons, that I guess is creating all sorts of headaches. 40 years ago, there was a different set of headaches. Today, the challenges mm -hmm. are quite different and it's not so much lack of interest, in some ways it's too much interest and in how do you manage and cope um, uh, with, with increasing demands. Okay, Peter, can we sit on to the next lot? So I've just got a small selection of um, photos related to the Rangers hut. I don't know whether this one probably hasn't been seen before. Um, it was an interest. It was another one of Sydney's uh, design things. I remember spending three days with a power saw cutting the rebates out of a huge pile of great red gum um, uh, sleepers, uh, which were used for the filling it all in. Uh, I think that's me up there without a shirt on, uh, spreading concrete. Barry, Barry, that's, that's you, Barry, isn't it? There. Yep, yeah, it is. Yeah, Barry, looking you down on Barry. He's lost a bit of hair since then. Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, and that's Sydney Clifton behind me, yeah, up on the yeah, up on the top there. Wow. So it was an interesting exercise. This is three years earlier, and for some other civic occasion that Sue might recall. But I thought I'd throw that in here. It's one of Laurie Corse's photos of um, local dignitaries and local populace coming down for, uh, for uh, something yeah. happening. I think it might have been an activity on Pine Ridge. It was, it was, a, it was uh, publicised to see the Pine Ridge Hut and it was publicised to see the area while it still exists because it was privately owned all this area on the Elkington side and we asked, uh, we asked the Premier to come but he couldn't come so he said his Minister of Conservation, Bill Billborthwick, down, with, and he's got his grandchild on. Oh, um, right, <laughs> yes. His shoulder, yeah. And Ben Heffernan, who was one of the councillors up there, too, looking very youthful. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, uh, next. Now, um, do you want me to turn the light on for you? No, 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 I think I can manage this. Um, as James said, I've, I've got a copy of um, the brown thing Um This is, this I had in my hand when we had the opening of the Rangers Hut. It's got the original program in the back. Um, and <clears throat> I won't see, Doug found this in the back of a bookcase or somewhere it sort of got lost but anyway um, what I want to do is I've got the original uh, type written on a one of these things with little hammers and you know <laughs> not a computer of a of one sheet which is the script for this little event because this is Mr. Rock no, it's Mr. Beer and Mrs. Rock, who were mm -hmm. two of the original 
inhabitants living on the Heidelberg side of the, of the enterprise. Um, I was the MC, and here we have uh, the couple, all duly attired, dressed, coming in. And so there was um, 222, car drives from entrance down the end of concrete strip. Mr. Beer and Mrs. Rock hurtle out in a great hurry and start running down the hill, that's down um, Pine, Pine Ridge. They stop to ask one of the crowd, Mr. Beer, we hear the Premier is coming. Now where is he? Are we too late? Michael Oxer steps forward. No, but who are you? <laughs> Mr. Beer. I am Mr. Beer. I lived here over 100, 120 years ago and was the first resident of the area. And this is Mrs. Rock, who bought my house in 1880. Michael Oxer introduces them to the Premier. Mr. Beer shakes Premier's hand. Here we go. <laughs> like the shorts and long socks. <laughs> See, it's this, this brown thing here. Is that one? Okay. Um, talk about hoarding stuff. <laughs> now, where am I? Now, congratulations, Mr. Premier. What a marvellous idea to make this whole area into a park to preserve it for people forever. Emphasis emphasizes this in some way and make a big fuss about the achievement. Okay, he carries on. <laughs> I remember the, these pine trees. It is good to see that they are still here. They were part of the first wagon track. I had vineyards along the creek here, you know, not bad wine. I even opened a, a wine shop in Alfington to sell it, but the, uh, the floods came and severely damaged the vineyards. At least Rockbear House, that I built 120 years ago, it's still there and we, can, we, can, we drove past it just now. I sold it to Mrs Rock and it still looks as good as ever, he turns to Mrs Rock. Mrs Rock, I always had in mind that this should be a public reserve looks ahead over the creek. Old Rock Bear House is gone. It looked neglected and had over the, and sat over there. It is so good that you're helping to bring this back to what it once was. I hope that part that part across the creek will soon look just as beautiful as it is here, she said, <laughs> looking across to the Darabin side because this is on Heidelberg's side, all this was happening on. Mr. Beer, well, goodbye, Mr. Premier. We must go, shakes hands. Mrs. Rock, how good of you to preserve this land. And off they go, and the Premier <coughs> turns the key, unlocks the, the door on the ranger's hut, and the good crew who next, who were part of the deal, Wow, that was done. <laughs> okay. Well, just to sort of quickly sum up the thought about fences. More and more I've come to the, the view that fences have be, probably become, been one of the, uh, the most debilitating things that's happened to humanity because we've built fences and subdivided and subdivided and stopped the wildlife moving around and we've closed in everything. But there are just a few places and Darabin Parklands, this piece of land, is one of the, one of the areas that is owned by the people. It's essentially unfenced. It's got a fence around it, but it's basically unfenced and it's available to um, anyone who wishes to come in and make use of it. So congratulations on the ongoing work that everyone does here. Fantastic undertaking. I deeply understand the demands, the challenges, the threats that a piece of land like this faces, but I'm sure that 
DPA has the resolve, the capacity and the interest and enthusiasm, the will and the desire to uh, keep going. James, here's a bit more paraphernalia. <laughs> You're welcome to, to that. Oh, thanks. Thank you.